Hello everyone, it's Jen from blog, and I have 10 cards, one kit for male and females in the cards from Creative Escape Paper Crafting and it is the new Amazing Value Kit. So let's get started on the 10 cards, I'm really excited to show them. Okay, so in the card kit, there was this, uh, it was a half sheet of um, gold foil paper, so of course I'm going to utilize that. Um, I wanted to make a birthday card for a male, and I haven't used this die for a little while, so um, I thought I would go ahead and use that. So you have the whole positive negative thing, but obviously it does not cut the star out, and I know it sounds odd for someone that's been making cards for, I, I won't tell you how long, like decades. Um, I don't have any star dies, so I had to cut that out manually, but it was no big deal. And um, I used the fancy folded banners, which is somewhat hard to say, from Lawn Fawn. Um, and I will get to that in a second. I kind of... I, I kind of cheated eventually, used the um, die to kind of help put the star together as best it could be. But I knew it was going to be covered up by the banner, so it wasn't really a big deal. So um, I wanted to layer the wood paper on it, but obviously if I did that, um, you know, the paper isn't going to be as sturdy as if I had the, you know, 100 pound cardstock. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. And then, of course, the foam squares and everything. Um, this ink pad is from W plus 9. It's called Old Gold. Um, so I went around the edges and um, I even did like the side of the banner, and it just, you know, helps to define it a little bit. And this is a, you know, it's, it's a tumble dotted uh, adhesive and any excess on the star, I can just roll right off like you see me doing right there. And it's no problem. And I attached a lot of foam squares <laughs> to pop that up, but that was fine with me because I... Uh, like my dimension. So um, I just kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. So this is a die by Tim Holtz. Um, it's from a set with like, I don't know, 15 words or something. I know it's not a new die, but you know, I use them. An oldie but goodie, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to come in with my beloved glue stick that I use from Pioneer. It is available on Creative Escape Paper Packaging. It can be quite hard to find, so it reinforces the foil a bit. And then I use the um, permanent marker to kind of like blend in the white bump squares. So all of these um, kind of like puffy stickers, they're kind of like in the embossed. They're not really squishy, but anyway, can you see the wood grain there? They really roll. Cool. And there are a lot of colors, so of course I had to use the wood grain in different colors and make this kind of pop a little bit more. Why not? Um, and then um, this is a new stamp set in the store from Neat and Tangled. And I just want a, a little phrase, but you know, after all of that, I didn't want to mess it, the card, so. I ended up having the hand stamp it um, because uh, I had too many <laughs> squares on there for the platform. So it's no big deal. I just went ahead and used the stamp and you have the finished product and I put that on the inside. And I'm not going to worry about the little ink smudge there. You know, it's handmade card. No biggie. So there you have it. Okay, so changing gears to this nice sunshine yellow cardstock, 
and not being shy with the glue again. And I'm just going to adhere that to my top folding A2 note card. And then I have the um, wreath pattern, which is always nice with a circular pattern to break up any rectangular or square shape on the card. And um, I trimmed down the cut aparts that came in the kit um, just because I kind of wanted to keep the focus on the really pretty floral. Um, that way, three of the blue flowers showed from the print and then counting the cut apart, and the scale since it's a top folding note card. I had to measure with my tape runner, so I'm going to. Fix that with a little bit of white Nouveau glue and pop that on. I wanted to kind of have it up towards the front, the top, I mean, <laughs> the front. Of course, it's on the front. <laughs> and use some of the yellow and white twine included. I also uh, use a little bit of glue stick around my fingers and just rub the ends to prevent fraying and then I'm going to use some long foam glue here you can get a tiny amount and it's perfect for the shaker and sequin mix that's a custom from Creative Escape Paper Crafting it is the glam metal like the little glossy accents on the flower and that's it for that card really nice and simple but pretty I think and effective Okay, I'm starting with the, well, what I said in the unboxing video was maybe my favorite, um, but there's so many great prints in this kit, and um, really, really hard to choose just one, so I really, really love the florals on that black background, I, I think it's just so striking, and I thought I would um, back it with the yellow cardstock, uh, which I cut, you know, for uh, some card bases. And then, in all honesty, I ended up just cutting the pieces to use for um, various layering options. So I, there you go. I have an extra one to set aside, and it, it just is nice to have the color that will match with anything the black, the craft, and the yellow and that way you have a boatload of options and you can also of course die cut sentiments so um, I see no harm in using especially for a 10 card video um, and kit that you're going to do I do not see any problem with using dyes, especially shape dyes or maybe word dyes in particular. Um, I don't measure every little thing for the cards. I kind of eyeball it and I do also hand trim some things, as you may have noticed, I guess, in the videos. Um, but I, I use the Hero Arts die that is a larger rectangle and then I use the long fawn stitch die um, for the smaller piece and I'm just going to attach foam foam the reason I actually traced this one is because of the stitching I got a little too much of the glue I just was using some PPA glue of course whatever you would like to use is absolutely fine and I do use various glues here to show you you can since I do get asked about that from time to time so um, but I, I actually will get to that I just wanted to make sure that the white didn't show through or the foam foam on the back of the black piece so you have some white popping through and then you know, maybe in other places it's not. So, um, if you want the white to show through, then you just obviously cut it to the exact same size. And but 
I would rather not. I just rather have the stitching pop through with the yellow and leave it at that. Especially since I'm layering on the white card base and everything. So I am using uh, my favorite glue stick. It is really, really nice for smaller pieces. And, well, I don't want to see a lot of things. Um, at the ends of twine, just smaller things that um, you can attach. Even, it can even hold some wood pieces and things like that to your, your paper crafting project. So I cut out strips from um, some of, well this was a border, the one that I'm adhering at the bottom. Um, it's talking about planning. And I thought that was kind of a nice time with the flowers live in the moment. It was part of a cut apart from the journaling tags, or as I call them most of the time, the card starters, the um, black and white plaid behind the grateful sticker is um, part of a, it's, it's also part of a border. And then, as you can see, I'm just taking part of the glue stick and dabbing it at the edges and twisting the ends in that will prevent fraying, I promise you. And I just used some of the um, glue stick right in the middle of the bow and it holds it perfectly right there to really highlight that. So, and then the B is part <laughs> of a journaling card also. So everything sort of came together to create my own uh, phrase. Okay, I'm going to start with a very little amount, I think, on my ink blending tool. I have the squeeze of the mini color and the dioxide. And it gives me an excuse to play with them. So, <laughs> I was going to go sort of light, but I, of course, thought, well, heck, if I'm going to spread water on it, might want to go darker. So, there we have it. And I just used the regular cardstock that came in the kit. It's really, really heavy. Um, so, I did a little bit of spraying and then, you know, some essentially I just did some smooshing technically, but I was going for the big droplets and um, did a little spattering of it water also and I did dry it can you see it starting to change there and um, you can see the lighter marks hopefully there and um, I put it through the die cutter and just ran it through and it smoothed out pretty well in my opinion so if you don't have watercolor cardstock and you receive any of the kits must and the white card sock is really really thick so um, you can get by with at least some water spattering and playing with dioxides on it fairly easily so um i wanted to do a little bit of a different shape and i did a like a tag shape for that fun garden print and then i just hand stamped the um, sentiment and I use the same tag shape. I believe it is a stick set that I got, I don't know how long ago, <laughs> years. So that way, um, you know, in all honesty, you can put that on the outside or you can put that on the inside. It certainly works together and the pink and the yellow also work well with the print so I just use some foam squares and this was an add-on admittedly um, I will be zooming out and in just a smidge here but uh, the stickers have so many options that um, 
it's it is well worth it I think to have and utilize and the reason I had an adhesive is because I was kind of at playing with it as far as my position so I put that on and it is flush and then I'm going to add a couple other elements from the sticker sheet and use the uh, powder tool with some foam squares on those two and um, that way nothing will get stuck to the back and then even the sentiment they're better together is also from the sticker so you can see here I have the gold um, enamel dots and then on the inside I have the tag of better together and that finishes that card okay so for this card I wanted to stamp some of the floral images and I find that using the acetate um, of the images, you know, printed in black is helpful to decide sizes and everything. And also, I was debating about using the dyes that matched with it, the shadow. But there are also a lot of words and everything in the kit. So, I knew that I at least wanted to stamp the white unicorn ink from Hero Arts. And I decided to do the smaller floral. And I'm fine with doing it by hand. Um, I, I think that, you know, you can use some paper, a tea ruler. If you want to make lines and go by that, you can. I just think, for me personally, it sort of takes part of the fun out of it. So I kind of just eyeball it. I've been stamping for a very long time and I'm okay with it not being you know 100% perfect because it is a handmade card so I just kind of went with it and then each row I twisted it meaning I turned it the other way upside down I went back and forth so each row has a different look you'll see the big white flower is at the top and then it'll be at the bottom just for some variation there and so I wanted it to be really clean and crisp and something that I could send to someone of any age and I always like white on craft I think it's kind of a neat look and um, I will be using a lot of glue in this video um, for some mail that I might be sending to my niece who is joining the Navy. So, um, I actually took this border and cut it into three pieces and thought that would make it pop. And I like the little, I like the black against the craft and the white. And then I used some of the included enamel dots with the long foam glue that I just showed how tiny this, it can squirt out. And that finished out the card. Okay, so I have a stitched rectangular yellow cardstock piece. Um, I use the long phone uh, rectangular stitch die. I, I did use a large set, but it is, I think, the middle piece. And um, I am going to obviously use a Versamark pad. And I'm just going to use the sentiment one of them, I should say, one of the sentiment stamps to give a little more depth and dimension here. And I'm going to do vertical and horizontal and up and down. Now, <laughs> Kel, the designer that is the head designer for the Amazing Value Kit, did this also, but she did it with the floral print, so Kel. Um, I promise I did not copy off of your idea or steal your idea. <laughs> I, I was going to do this too, the tags. So she used it, uh, or the she did the floor image on, on a circle, and it looked really cool. So, you know, but anyway, I would never steal your ideas, Kel. And, and her YouTube, if you want to check her out, is Scraps and Photographs. You can um, see 
more about the designers uh, in the Facebook group and on the Creative Escape paper crafting blog. So I just went around and did some inking uh, around the edges of the tags. I did obviously cut them, but I just I hand cut the tops. Um, I thought it'd be a bit much to use a trim on those. This is what I call the quintessential um, platinum peacock card base, and that means that there's part of the card that is removed so to speak so there's an area for the sentiment to go directly there and again I'm using the neat and tangled stamp set here um, there's just so many really really good sentiments from birthday to encouragement to you're so brave I'm proud of you um, thank you dream big and I really like this one <laughs> it it kind of just made me chuckle. Um, you're all kinds of awesome. I <laughs> just thought it was a nice little twist for a thank you, but it could also just be um, for a friend or encouragement also. So anyway, I just used Lon Fong gold embossing powder on that, by the way. And I'm going to use the Thermoweb strips here. Um, I like them because they're not sticky on the edge. And they do bend really, really well. And I just used some nine six scissors. I thought the the strips would be easier than than you know cutting fun foam per e per tag. I thought it'd be a little tedious. And I knew that I would need more than one square. I wanted it to be a little bit more stable in case I wanted to mail this. So um as you can see, finish it up and this was an add-on for the fully loaded kit, although you can purchase it, of course, at any time. Um, and it is a thicker set that has some puffy elements to it, and also some um, like wire capabilities that you can kind of bend some of the pieces and it was designed to coordinate with the Maggie Holmes Flourish Kit, but it has a lot of really cool things on it. And I used all of the gold enamel dots, so <laughs> I thought I would use these hearts. It almost has like a heart inside of a heart. I really like that. And the Wink of Stella on top of the botanical images. I just did it on the images. Um, I want to go up over the tag. Um, and you can see the heart, it gives it some dimension there, I love the sentiment, it, and then the stamp that I used on the outside of the card is on the inside of the card. So it all works together and comes together. Okay, so this is another one of my favorite prints from the kit. <laughs> and this floral spray is gorgeous. I want to make the most of it. So, um, the other side is also pretty. I am going to fussy cut it, part of it, <laughs> and I'm going to kind of use a die as, as my guide, as you can see there in the corner, so I don't waste anything. And that way I have a little bit of the other print left. To use. So I'm going to fussy cut the top and the left hand side and um, really I'm going to go around the leaves and um, not worry about absolute perfection but really just making the most of this print that I can or as much as possible I should say. And another way, of course, to do that simply is to pop it on a black uh, card base. So my main concern really is to make sure that the leaves are on there and not just sticking up over the top. Although it does look pretty that way, it needs to be okay <laughs> to mail without being damaged. So. I'm also going to create a sentiment that needs 
a little something. So I will use the Rose Gold Delicata ink pad included in the kit and create the sentiment with the Lawn Fawn Lacy Hearts die and the outside in stitch die. So you can see as the green is the lacy border heart there and the outside end stitch and they work really beautifully as far as die cutting and together yes there is also stitching on the um, lacy heart also so I'll stack these and then um, in the interest of time I didn't show every little thing but after I mounted this to the card base, I added some Nuvo drops to the center of the flowers, and I added a little bit of the uh, black and white Baker's twine, just a small bow um, underneath the heart for the sentiment to really finish it off. And of course, I'm using my beloved blue gun since that is what works for me to adhere the you know paper and the heart to the card base and that wraps it up and in the stills you'll see what I mean at the end okay I'm going to use the squeezed lemonade from the latest distress oxide release with the Ulta new watercolor stripe stencil I think we, I think there's like one left in the store. They've been a little popular. And, you know, when you kind of look at it, it's a bit deceiving. Looks like it might be sort of sloppy, or at least to me, I'm not always great with picturing in my mind dyes and stencils as far as what the image will actually end up looking like. So I wanted to show it because it's deceiving. I really liked the finished product. As you can see in the right hand corner, I did the inking with the uh, squeezed lemonade all at once. It just made sense. And um, especially when I'm going to use a stencil, I, I just sometimes I just use a bag for holding the stamps, um, you know, instead of the entire craft mat. And then I just grab the extra ink to kind of soften the white in between the squeezed lemonade. And I also blended in the new rose because the tattered rose. And there is the Ulta new stencil. It is 6x6, six by, six, by the way. So you don't have to move it around if you're going to use glitter paste or embossing paste or what have you. It's kind of nice not to have to worry about that, I think. So, um, that way I have a nice ombre effect. And especially after I use a lot of ink, not that I'm shy with adhesive anyway, but I, I don't uh, mess around with the adhesive. I want to make sure that piece stays on. So, um, I wanted to make a birthday card for one of our nieces and nephews. As you can see, I have a die cut board there. And, um, I'm just showing you what I'm going to use. I like this bike and I thought that worked really well with a tattered rose color of ink. And um, I also use that Oh Happy Day. And the idea was to have sequins kind of spraying out from the basket and I use the um, the heavy metal sequins for that. Uh, it is a, a custom shaker and sequin mix that you can get and it lasts a long time. <laughs> there are so many colors of uh, different metals and even iridescent and such so it's nice to just pour out some and then go ahead and apply to your project. So I'm using um, matte medium 
for this and I'll just do a few pieces at a time um, I, it's easier that way you don't have an excess of glue squirting out and I also applied sequins front and back for a little variation and just it it just adds um a little bit more fun and whimsical look I think I think it's kind of fun to to mix up how the sequins are applied and of course I did various sizes of sequins from uh, three millimeter and even C B all the way up to eight millimeter that is what is in the mix. So it's one thing I like to do for a, a ten card video is I like to make things that are somewhat simple. I have the five four three two one scaling system. So you know I would say this is like a two. All I do is really ink blend the background, but the effect is really, really pretty with all the sequins. And I know our niece will like it. So that finishes that card. Beautiful and shiny. Okay, changing gears. I love this print. I thought it was really updated and fresh, but also woven in with a flower in the middle of the arrows. So I had to use it. I'm just going to use black fun foam uh, for a little dimension because I'm going to have a lot of shine going on in this kit and I don't apologize for it, no no, I love it so I'm not going to be, you know, shine with the adhesive and um, the reason I flashed the dye there is it's for my stash, it's an Anna Griffin dye I've had it for I think like a year, year and a half or something but I thought it went well with this kit and to be honest with you I don't have a lot of long arrow dyes so, um, and I wanted to, of course, utilize it, and the theme is n mixing metals for the challenge this week on the Creative Escape Paper Crafting uh, Facebook group, and, well, anyone can join in with that, and the reason why is because I had the fully loaded um, flourish. Maggie by Maggie Holmes um, items in it for that release and she was mixing her metals in that that was one of the things she meant but so I wanted to make the rose gold delicata ink that was included in the kit and you know make it really shiny so I could emboss it with clear embossing powder and I used the silver um, mirror card from the shop and the gold that was included and in the gold on the sentiment from the kit also and I figured that was, you know, enough shiny <laughs> and left it at that. Okay. Well speaking of five four three two one, I also wanted to make some note cards and nice four bar cards essentially um, to send out for just you know staying in touch with relatives and friends and um, the journaling pieces slash card starters are perfect for that so I thought I would keep this really really classic I use a very very small portion of the black cardstock, all things considered, with how much it gets. And, um, I use the white base, and then, of course, I, I did trim down just a touch the journaling card, because, um, I wanted to have it scaled, and, you know, I, I just thought it also put more focus on the really really pretty white floral cluster so I added some fun foam and just cut it to size and stuck it on there with my adhesive and then I also die cut 
um, the just for you sentiment that was a die that was included in the in the kit and I'm just going to use my trusty pioneer glue stick even if it kind of you know, sticks to the paper it's no big deal I'm going to use the green that was just a little bit of a leftover piece from when I die cut uh, a hard piece in a different card and I had that left over so I wanted to use that and honestly you could just do the green it would be really pretty but you know I thought well why not use some of the foil since we got half a sheet to play with so I just did an off-center uh, piecing on that and as I usually mention with the glue stick um, if you get any glue stick on your foil you can just use a baby wipe or something like that uh, anything damp and and it will um, clean up so there you have it the tin cards and the sills are following okay in no particular order here are the stills and close-ups and uh, later see some group shots of all of the tin cards and that way you can see them up close and personal and at various degrees of effort as far as the five four three two one for the tank cards. Also, um, this kit was restocked earlier a few weeks ago, or it would have been sold out. There were just a few remaining literally, so if you would like this kit, it's $25.99 for all of the things that you get here. I would really encourage you to maybe think about it. Thanks so much. Stay crafty, my friends.